Welcome back to the Offbit. Today we're going to be looking at installing a GTX 750 into this infamous HP IPIS B CU motherboard, also known as the Carmel 2. Why am I looking at this? Apparently, this GTX 750 should not run in this motherboard. So we're going to try and prove that wrong. The HP IPISB-CU, also known as Carmel 2. Motherboard's been manufactured by Pegatron and is in the micro ATX form factor. It's on a H61 chipset and uses the LGA1155 platform and can be found in systems like this HP Pavilion P7-1205. I purchased this motherboard off eBay for a cheerful $1.25. So why does no one like this board? Why is it so cheap? Well, doing a short search through the internet will reveal any new video cards that use a UEFI BIOS will not boot on this board. You need to look for a legacy BIOS supported video card. So basically anything from NVIDIA's 700 series and for AMD Radeon stuff, I'm not 100% sure, but probably anything after the Radeon 7000 series. I've also come across people complaining that it won't run Ivy Bridge CPUs, but I'm yet to test that. Now, the video card we're using today is the Asus GTX 750-PHOC-2GD5. So this is an NVIDIA GTX 750. This is not a TI, this is a bland 750. Packing two gig of GDR5 running at five gigahertz. We also got GPU clock running at 1059 on its base frequency and on its boosted clock frequency is 1137 megahertz. So while we put in the GTX 750, I might talk about this system right here. So it's running an i5-2310. We have two sticks of DDR3 RAM, both 4 gig each, giving us a total of 8 gig of RAM. We're running the VS550 550 watt power supply by Corsair. The drive we'll be using today will not be the magnetic drive that's in here. We'll be using my Testbench's SSD, which is a Western Digital green 120 gig SSD. So as we boot the system, I'm expecting it to crash just after the BIOS, which we can see right here. This is where it sits, or sometimes it will go to a black screen and crash. So my plan to work around with this is that we're gonna turn on the internal GPU and make it boot the graphics from the internal GPU and when we get into Windows we'll be using the GTX 750. Now to do this you're going to need a couple of things though. You're going to need a graphics card that actually can boot so something with legacy BIOS. So the card I'm going to be using today is the HD 6570. It's also super helpful if you have a second monitor. So one of these monitors will be plugged onto the motherboard's internal GPU and the other one will be on the GTX 750. So we're just booting up with HD 6570 in the card, which is a compliant card for the motherboard. So what we want to do is go down to device options and enable integrated video. It's always a good idea to hit F10 or accept, unlike I did just then. So there we go, we've got it enabled. So we're going to go save changes and exit, yes. So now we're going to reboot, we're going to back into the BIOS set the internal graphics as the main booting graphics. So we go the Intel VGA controller non-boot device, change that to primary, hit F5, hit F10 to accept, let's double check. Every time you go into this BIOS and you change something, you've got to make sure you set this again. Save changes and exit. So the next step is to remove the compliant video card that works with this motherboard. And we're going to put in the GTX 750, which crashes on usual BIOS boot. 
But now we set the Intel graphics card as the bootable graphics card, it should just bypass the UFI crashing on the GTX 750. From this point onwards, we don't remove the GTX 750, so it will stay in there forever. Now with the GTX 750 installed, I just want to go down and make sure we've got the boot on the PCI VGA is back to Intel again. It will change every time you go into this BIOS, so every time you change them, you need to go back there and do it. Just check a couple other things, just make sure this is all good, everything's looking fine. So we'll just go to save and exit. So we're running off the internal graphics at the moment, so we're just booting up into Windows 10. Okay, our properties for our system show that we do have an adapter. Now we want to download the latest drivers for the HD2000 or the internal graphics or the one in the CPU. So we're just downloading that now and installing it. All right, once this, this is done, we're just going to reboot the computer and we're going to install the GTX 750 drivers. We're just downloading the drivers for the GTX 750 from the NVIDIA's website. Once it's downloaded, just run the install. You can see in Device Manager on the right that the GTX 750 has a problem, but the driver install will fix that. Okay, while you're installing this, you want to set this up for a clean install every time. Right, you'll see on the right in the Device Manager, it will install the driver and it will fix the GTX 750 and the card will actually enable. Okay, it's very important you can only use shutdown now. If you don't use shutdown and you hit restart, it will undo it and you'll have to reinstall the GTX 750, just the driver. You pretty much need to redo this last step, which is just reinstall the driver as a clean GTX 750 install. Just disconnected the connector into the internal GPU and we just boot it up. So this is just off the GTX 750 now. To the bottom left you'll see the screen as it loads through the BIOS and you'll see a black screen where it's actually crashing. Here it is. So Windows just picks it up and reinitialize it and bam, here we are in Windows 10. So we go to Device Manager, there's our GTX 750. So just to prove things, we're going to be running Minecraft Java Edition and then it will show you all the hardware running. So we just started up a new creative world. So here we're in Minecraft and you can see clearly on the right hand side we've got the GeForce GTX 750 running this. So it is possible to get it to work, it is not an easy task. So I'm going to go back through each step. Step 1. Put in a usable video card that works in the motherboard in the graphics slot. Step 2. Turn PC on, go into the BIOS and enable the Intel internal graphics. Save the settings. Reboot. Step 3. Go back into the BIOS. Set the Intel graphics as the bootable graphics because it will by default select the PCI Express graphics. So set this, save it and shut down the PC. Step four, replace the usable video card with the GTX 750 or your desired video card. Plug your video cable onto the internal graphics output on the back of your motherboard. Then boot your PC. Step five, download and install the latest Intel graphics drivers for the internal graphics. Once that's done, reboot your PC. Step six, install the GTX 750 drivers and make sure you do a clean install. This will enable the graphics card to work. At this point, you can disconnect the video cable and plug it into the GTX 750, or if you're using two monitors, you'll see it appear. From this point on, you must use shutdown and never use restart. Once you use restart, you'll have to repeat step six, or the last step that we just talked about. Well, that's all we got time for at the off bit. If you found this video helpful, and you'd like to see more of this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And we've got the comments there. Let's keep this open. This is a hard thing to do. I love to talk through it with people. It's not an easy feat. And also there is no guarantee that this will work. It has worked for me and these are the steps I took. Well, that's us today for the Off Pit. We'll catch you next time on the Off Pit. <laughs>